Hello everyone, I'm Kate Baldwin. We have breaking news for you this hour. The U.S. attorney in Manhattan has charged the Russian lawyer who met in Trump Tower with Donald Trump Jr. and others, remember, in that infamous meeting in 2016, promising dirt on Hillary Clinton. Well, SDNY, they have now charged that attorney in a separate case, highlighting her ties to the Russian government. We're talking about Natalia Veselnitskaya. Let's go over to CNN crime and justice reporter Shimon Prokupes. He's got all the details. Shimon, I was just trying to look through this release. She's charged with obstruction of justice. What is this about? Right. So it just has to do with a case that the Southern District of New York, this is the U.S. Attorney in Manhattan, has been looking into, has been investigating. It's a civil case. It's a money laundering and forfeiture action uh, involving uh, Russian tax fraud schemes. Most important thing is that she apparently, there was some, uh, what the government is saying, is alleging here, is that she had uh, assisted in some ways, uh, that she had obstruct, obstructed justice in, that, in their investigation of this matter. Important to note, this has nothing to do with the Trump Tower meeting where she met with Donald Trump Jr. and other folks, obviously, with the campaign. However, what is important here is that this is the first time that we're really getting word from the FBI, from the Department of Justice, from the government, really, the U.S. government, of her close connections and her close ties to the Russian government. And that is what's mostly important here. Uh, she is not in this country, so probably will never uh, see uh, court. She probably will never have to face a judge here. She probably will never be taken into custody, of course, unless she leaves Russia. But obviously, the most important thing, given who she is and her role uh, in perhaps the Russia investigation and the interest of the Mueller team in the meeting at the Trump Tower, the Southern District of New York continued and pursued their matter and their investigation and have now filed charges uh, against her, charging her with obstruction of justice. And Shimon, remind everyone of the role that she has played in that infamous Trump Tower meeting that was, that's part of the Mueller investigation, well, why everyone knows her name. Right. And everyone knows her name, certainly be because she was the person who was front and center at this meeting. Uh, she helped organize this meeting. She came in. She made certain uh, charges that she had provided, was going to, wanted to talk about ad adoptions. It, it turned out that the meeting was really about, the, there was a promise of dirt. And then she started talking uh, dirt against Hillary Clinton. And then there was this talk of Russian adoptions and sanctions. And that's what certainly concerned some people uh, in the meeting where she was present with other folks uh, with the campaign. And that is why the Mueller team has been looking into this, because they're trying to see if this was somehow uh, set up to try and interfere in the election, to try and sway the, the certainly the Trump people and what the Russians really wanted here from the Trump campaign. And obviously the concern uh, of coordination and collusion, which is still an ongoing investigation with the Mueller team. All right, Shimon, stay with us. I also want to bring in right now CNN legal analyst, former federal prosecutor Jennifer Rogers um, on this one. So, Jennifer, we're looking through this. Shimon's laying out what Vessel in the Sky is, is charged with. What stands out to you here? Well, uh, a couple of things. First, it's a case brought by the Southern District of New York, not by Mueller's team. As right. you've said, has nothing to do with the Trump Tower meeting, at least as of now. It relates to uh, false statements she made in connection with the civil action brought by Southern District. So it makes sense that they have brought this case. What's interesting is what happens from here. You know, is she going to cooperate? Does she want to return to the U.S.? Does she ever want to be here again? And if so, does she kind of offer herself as a cooperating witness to Southern District? And therefore, by extension, she would have to cooperate with Mueller's team as well. The fact that it is completely separate from the Mueller investigation, what does does it mean anything for the Mueller investigation? Well, not necessarily unless she decides to cooperate and then that, of course, mm -hmm. would be a potentially good thing for the Mueller investigation. You know, we don't yet know what, if any, charges are going to come out of the Trump Tower meeting. Southern District has brought these separately. Even if Mueller was about to charge the Trump Tower meeting and include her in those charges, these would still be separate charges brought in a separate court. So it doesn't really say anything about whether we're going towards criminal charges on that meeting, but the potential for cooperation, if that that were to happen would mean big things. And one for thing Shimon has been pointing out, because it was a big question in the tangled web and saga of how we all learned the details of the Trump Tower meeting, who this person was, what her connections were, what her intentions were, um, and many other things. 
One of the questions all along was how connected was this person with the Russian government? How high up, if he, did, how high up did, did she have access to? And one of the things I just see one line is this, this investigation brought to light how Veselnitskaya secretly schemed with a senior Russian prosecutor to provide false information to the U.S. to U.S. law enforcement in an attempt to influence the legal proceedings of SDNY. That seems to answer it somewhat. You're exactly right. So, so when all of this, this intrigue surrounding the Trump Tower meeting was going on, what we kept hearing from her is, oh, I have nothing to do with them. I'm not a Russian you know, right. intelligence person. I'm not connected to the government. And that seems to be the same thing that she was saying in connection with the civil case. I'm not con connected with them. I'm having a tough time getting information from them. And then when she did, she represented she had nothing to do with it, when in fact she had drafted this declaration and, and had lied about her ties. So that seems to be a common theme here, an ongoing thing. And, you know, at least in this document, they're calling her out on it by filing criminal charges. And in connection, as you said, if she she's not in the country, as, as Shimon says, and as you're pointing out, um, the likelihood that she would want to come back? Well, pretty low <laughs> unless she decides, you know, she won't come back. As an to, attorney, I would advise you. <laughs> she won't come back just to face these charges and go to prison, right? It would only be if she was trying to strike some deal, which she would have her folks reach out and try to arrange that before she came back into the country. But if she wants to continue to be able to come here, work here, and so on, then it's possible that she would try this, to make this that This gets to, and this talks about the Magnitsky case. And this is and this is tangled. But the Magnitsky Act was one of the things that she actually was going to Trump Tower to talk about. One That's of the right. things that they said it was all about Russian adoptions, which is related to the Magnitsky Act and related to Sergei Magnitsky, which is cited in this filing. That's right, because the civil case where the filing was made that they've now charged as being false and obstruction of justice mm -hmm. was about that case that, that generated the Magnitsky Act, the, the, the murder, essentially, of exactly. Sergei Magnitsky, the massive fraud that he exposed, which is why he ended up Hundreds dying in the first place. Hundreds of millions and millions of dollars. That's what the civil case was about, and that's why you know they mention it here, because it, it was the, the basis for her false statements and money laundering, which have now been charged. The tangled web from what came from that meeting and everything involved is getting even more tangled now. But now we have Natalia Veselnitskaya charged with obstruction of justice. Let's see what happens next.